Sekhmet represented the might of the sun, the power of the sun, particularly at the time of midday. Um, but she also was almost like this goddess of terror, terror created through the destruction and, and catastrophe and disease and famine. So she could be like evoked to send against your enemies or something like that. But she's very much connected with an ancient Egyptian legend relating to uh, a cataclysm. Because it's said that the, the god Ra, the sun, uh, basically got tired of the human race and decided to wipe them out. So he called upon the goddess Hathor in her form as Sekhmet, because the two goddesses are very closely linked, to rain down fire from heaven to destroy the human race. And she was destroying, you know, most of them. And the other gods intervened and said, Ra, Ra, you've got to stop this. You know, this is not cool. And um, he said, oh, OK, then. And what happened then is that Ra sent down this intoxicating brew, this flood that covered the earth, which the goddess then drank, got drunk, forgot what she was doing. And so the human race was saved. And this is a, an Egyptian legend. And I'm pretty certain that this relates to the fire and flood associated with the comet cataclysm from 10,900 BC. I mean, I write about this in From the Ashes of Angels in 1996. I write about it, I think it's in, it's probably even in Gebekli Tepe, the latest book. I mean, but it's in various of my books. And I'm pretty certain that, that it relates to this incident. Um, so that's that. But these statues, of which there are actually six in the British Museum. Four here, another one down here, and another one in room two, which we'll see shortly, a part of a, um, a whole avenue of them, of 730 statues that were created, all identical, all like this. And they lined this route to a temple in Luxor that was built by the Pharaoh Amenhotep III. Now he was Akhenaten's half-brother or father or both um, and of course Akhenaten was the, um, the like the instigator of the Amarna period and we know that during this time there was a major plague that found its way into Egypt and may even have claimed the life of various of the Amarna royal family you know, perhaps even people like you know, Nefertiti and some of Akhenaten's daughters, whatever. And my, my friend and colleague Graham Phillips in his book, Act of God, suggested that these 730 Sekhmic statues, remember she's the goddess of, flame, of, of plague and famine, were actually erected to try and appease whatever spirits were seen to be behind this plague, to try and stop this plague from actually overrunning Egypt. Now, whether it worked or not, I don't know. But what it has left us is hundreds and hundreds of these segment statues that are spread far and wide around the globe and are in museums all over the world, basically. And there's just so many of them. But what's interesting is that many people have weird experiences in front of these statues. I mean, I first learnt of this many years ago, and then I read a book by an uh, American writer named Brad Steiger. Some of you may know some of his books on UFOs and things. And in a book called um, Gods of Aquarius, he talks about the power of these segment statues and how pe mediums and psychics would have these experiences where they would actually find themselves in communication with the goddess. And what they did, well, they did some experiments. They actually created new ones. They got, they got a, a, a carver to create modern ones and the psychics had exactly the same experiences. You know, they, they found themselves in contact with the, the goddess. But if they changed the design, even a little, and the proportions, the psychics picked up nothing. It was almost as if there's something special about the proportions, the size, the volume, or whatever it is of these that affects people's brains. And you hear this quite a lot with 
certain statues that resonate some kind of energy um, and that even the ancients believed that things had to be at certain proportions and sizes and things like that. And I think there's an element of that in this. What are well, oh, okay, right. All of the lion or cat goddesses of Egypt, I say all, but certainly Sekhmet, Bastet, uh, Tefnut, is there another one? Um, well, certainly those three are all known as the Eye of Ra. And as one of the ladies pointed out in the previous tour this morning, the reason why the cats are connected with Ra, the sun, is because a cat's eyes change over the course of a day. You know, allegedly. Do you know anything about this? The changing light. The changing light will, will, will change the, 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 um, the cat's eye. So there's some relationship between the eye and the sun and, and cats. Um, so they're all known as the eye of Ra. That, you know, Sekhmet was the eye of Ra. Bastet, who we'll see a statue of shortly, is the eye of Ra. You know, they're all known as the eye of Ra. So, so the disc is the sun? The disc is the sun, is, is the answer to your question. So, right. Yeah. Is there a particular one which is more vibed up than the other? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I think that's a personal uh, um, choice, really. But before we go, if you want to get any good photos, the, the angle that I, I find best is from here, between this gap, because the light shines onto them. So you might want to do that just before you go. But we're, because we're going next, just over here to the Rosetta Stone.